This program is brought to you by The Big Secret Movie, now available on Amazon Prime and other video delivery services, and by Occupy Health, available on Voice America, and by TVE Course, featuring free online classes in electronics, video production, broadcast engineering, sports, and health, and by the Paul Porter YouTube channel, the Porter Museum of Broadcast Electronics. Welcome to TVE Course Tech Talk, and please remember to subscribe and comment. Robert and I took a road trip to Milford, Texas a few weeks ago to take 4K video of the Visive Technologies Wardenclyffe Tower Resurrection. For those of you who didn't know about the Wardenclyffe Tower, it was a device designed and built by Nikola Tesla in Shoreham, New York in 1901. The tower was designed for wireless power transmission. Tesla had already demonstrated wireless power transmission using small-scale models. The tower was more than half completed when the project's primary backer, financier J.P. Morgan, pulled the funds when he realized that people could tap into and use the wireless electricity without having to pay. Morgan wanted something that had a meter on it so customers could be charged. Additional investment could not be found and the project was abandoned in 1906 never to become operational. In an attempt to satisfy Tesla's debts, the tower was demolished for scrap in 1917 and the property taken in foreclosure in 1922. On January 7, 1943, at the age of 86, Tesla died alone in room 3327 of the New Yorker Hotel. Two days later, the Federal Bureau of Investigation seized Tesla's belongings. John G. Trump, that's President Donald Trump's uncle, a professor at MIT and well-known electrical engineer serving as a technical aide to the National Defense Research Committee, was called in to analyze Tesla's items, which were being held in FBI custody. In 2016, the FBI finally declassified 250 pages of Tesla's related documents. They were heavily redacted, of course. This had to be done under the Federal Freedom of Information Act. The Bureau followed up with the two additional releases, the latest being in March of 2018. I suspect that Visiv is using the released technical documents as the basis for their design and patents. Visiv Technologies says they have developed a system of patent pending processes and equipment to efficiently launch a Zenic surface wave that allows the earth itself to be used as a clean, safe, and efficient transfer for power between any two points on the globe wirelessly. We drove south on Interstate Highway 35 from Dallas to Milford, Texas. Surprisingly, the Visive Tower is right on the Interstate Highway. You would expect a secretive operation like this would be in another location unless there was a geographic reason for this specific location. To get to the tower, we had to exit into the town of Milford on Road 566 and then turn left on Main Street, which is also Highway 77. And then we headed north until we took a left on Dale Acres Road, which took us back over the interstate, and then we could see Visiv and the tower facility clearly. It was on the left, and we could see the tower guard stations and other buildings, the main tower, and assorted large resonance tuning and shut structures. Here's a satellite photograph that was taken while the facility was under construction. It shows the tower base and metal structure components. We parked on Dale Acres Road, just north of the visit facility, and began taking 4K footage of the tower and other structures. Almost immediately, a guard truck exited the facility and headed toward us and parked in a position where the view from the camera was blocked. The guard exited the vehicle and, and said, stop filming immediately. You are not allowed to take photos of or video of this facility. We pointed out that this was a public road and that we were allowed to video anything we wanted. The guard said, no, you aren't. You must leave immediately. I didn't know if the road was public or private and because of the suspicion I had that the facility was actually part of the US government I decided to go ahead and leave. I know that many of the executives in the company are high US military and government officials. The guard gave me a business card and instructed us to contact their executive vice president. So we decided to head back south across the interstate highway and took up a new position on Highway 77. We took RF signal readings using both low and high frequency RF meters. Surprisingly, we found hardly any low frequency RF signals, except for some 60 hertz 
from a nearby high tension line. This was at about a half a mile away and in the middle of a field where there should be no signals of any type. Gets real low. Point it toward the tower. High. Away from the tower. Low. And then swing back up to the tower. Zoom in and get the top of the tower. Out in the middle of this field, we were finding signal strengths equivalent to that of being next to a strong Wi-Fi router. This is not what I would have expected from a Zenic surface wave transmitter. According to Visiv, a Zenic surface wave is an electromagnetic wave that uses the surface of the Earth as a waveguide, enabling it to carry communications, signals, or electrical power efficiently over long distances. This wireless power system would employ a transmitter probe located near a power generating plant to launch the Zenit carrier wave. The receiving antenna would be positioned appropriately around the world to receive the signal and download the power to a local microgrid or conventional grid architecture. This system might be very important in the event of an EMP for emergency power to keep food and water supplies operational. In that event, it could save millions of lives. You might be wondering who Jonathan Zinnick is. Well, he was one of the first known scientists to study electromagnetic propagation over the surface of the Earth. With Zinnick surface waves, electrical power is directed along the Earth's surface in much the same way that electrical power is directed through conventional transmission lines using electromagnetic waves. According to Visiv, the power transfer is safe and secure they focus on two key factors, the potential for shock and local RF field strengths. Visiv surface waves meet the most stringent standards for both. They point out that Zenic surface waves don't deliver a shock for the same reason radio stations don't shock you. To create a shock, there must be a difference in potential. They also mention that the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, and the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, have strict guidelines for RF exposure levels. These standards have been in place for decades. Those limits are more than 10 times what will be produced by a commercial visive surface wave system. In a sense, that's concerning because many of those standards are outdated and not related to newer technologies. They do not take into account the 24-7, 365 continuous total Earth surface exposure of an operational visive field and what that would do to life forms and other parts of the ecosystem. And what if a terrestrial object or structure acted as an antenna that was resonant to the visive field and concentrated power at that location? Typically, when talking about RF radiation dangers to life forms, scientists divide the radiation into two forms, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing is generally considered safe. According to Wikipedia, non-ionizing radiation refers to any type of electromagnetic radiation that does not carry enough energy to ionize atoms or molecules. That is, to completely remove an electron from an atom or molecule, instead of producing charged ions when passing through matter. Non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation has sufficient energy for excitation of the electrons, but not the movement of the electron from a shell or orbit of an atom. The ionizing radiation, which has a higher frequency and shorter wavelength, can be a health hazard. Exposure to that can cause burns, radiation, sickness, cancer, genetic damage. Generally, if it doesn't cause free electrons or heat, it's considered safe. 
Unfortunately, there are indications that that theory isn't holding true. With even low-level cell phone radiation, brain surgeons are already noticing a real increase in brain tumors near the areas of the brain where cell phone radiation is concentrated. And human blood cells tend to stick together when exposed to cell phone and Wi-Fi microwave radiation. Also, interestingly, men who keep cell phones in their pants pocket also have an approximately 50% drop in sperm cell count. So the safety of a total Earth's surface exposure of an operational visit field is unknown. There have been no small-scale safety tests on life forms as far as I know. Sometimes the simplest things can cause a biotic crisis. VLTV, another YouTube channel, has brought up some interesting information regarding the National High Resolution Reflectivity Composite Map of the United States showing some abnormal T's coming out of Milford, Texas. VISIV has filed for many patents including flexible network topology and bi-directional power flow, hybrid guided surface wave communication, guided surface wave transmission of multiple frequencies in a lossy media. Now let's, let's take a look at what this means. Okay, it says you're sending multiple frequencies and power across the lossy media. What is the lossy media? Well, the lossy media is the surface of the earth. And when you say a media is lossy to RF communications, what that means is it's dissipating energy in that media. It's like a power transmission cable. In many cases, 60% of the power from point A to point B is dissipated in the line. Well, what happens to the line? It gets hot. It produces heat in the line. And so if we're in the lossy media, if we're living, if we're living in the lossy media, if we're living in the lossy media and we're dissipating power in the lossy media, then that means it's going to probably put heat in the environment. Maybe not that much, but a little bit of change in temperature caused by dissipating energy into the entire surface of the earth could have unforeseen consequences. And they admit here that they're, they're going through a lossy media, which means they're thinking that a lot of their energy is going to be dissipated into the environment. So it's going to be an environment. Where is it going to go? What's it going to do? Another patent is for guided surface wave guides and probes. Another one is for embedding data in a power signal. So, you know, they're thinking about we'll send everybody electricity and when at the same time, we'll give them the biggest broadband they ever had. Um, Another one is global emergency and disaster transmission, and that would be real good in the EMP case I was talking about earlier. All of these patents sound very interesting and indicate the possibility of a huge wireless power transfer and ultra-wide band data communication system. This program is brought to you by The Big Secret Movie, now available on Amazon Prime and other video delivery services, and by Occupy Health, available on Voice America, and by TVE Course, featuring free online classes in electronics, video production, broadcast engineering, sports, and health, and by the Paul Porter YouTube channel, the Porter Museum of Broadcast Electronics.